This is showing the best practice where you're setting up your drum track for the drum exercise for AU405. First of all, you want to group all the drums to come out of an auxiliary channel. Good way of doing this. Select all your drums, shift and I'll turn it, come down, and we can do a new track. And this was going to create an auxiliary input with all the outputs of the drums routed to the input of this auxiliary channel. Just label it. Now we see here, we have our drum bus. All the outputs routed to the input of this drum bus. When I play it through, I can now control the volume of all the drums from this. It also means that I can put dynamic processors on this track should I want to compress everything the stereo drum track. Not only do we want to have drum bus, we also want to have a master fader. So we're going to make up a new stereo track. We're going to make it a master fader. Create it. Now everything that we have in this mix turns up on this master fader. This is best practice for all your sessions that you're doing to have a master fader so you can check the output volume of the master. Once we've done this, we then also think about adding EQs, maybe compression to the individual drums. These will be done on the inserts. You can come through, EQ your drum, however you want to hear it. You can also add your dynamic processor through this. So we can compress the kick drum EQ to the kick drum a bit more. Bring up some of the air around the sound. We go through and do this on all our drums. Getting the best level and the best EQ, the best sound that we can get on them. We then also want to add some reverb. Uh, this shouldn't be done on an insert on the individual channel but should be done on an auxiliary channel. So again, we can come up to our send. We can do a new track. This is going to make a new auxiliary input track, stereo track, and we're going to call this one reverb. Our reverb turns up here. I'm just ordering it so that it makes more sense to me. On this reverb, and now on this reverb channel, I'm now going to add our reverb effect. This is here. This is going to be my send to the reverb, my kick drum. You can hear our added reverb on that. Let's add a bit on the snare drum as well. So you can see the benefit of actually adding it on the auxiliary channel is I can route a lot of different instruments through to that one reverb just using the one reverb. So that's the basics of setting up the different parts of the track. So to recap, we want to add EQs, dynamic processors to the individual channels. On the inserts, we want to send sends from the channel to go to the reverbs. On an auxiliary channel, we want to group all the drums together to come out of an auxiliary channel. And we want a master fader there so that we can check the output levels that are coming up. And we can also uh, limit, compress whatever we want to do on this output channel as well. That's the basic way of setting up your Pro Tools session for the drum exercise. When you're taking this further, you should also think about automating some parts of the uh, session to try and get extra marks on that to make it an even better uh, file that you've got. Remember this 
is going to be marked on the process that you're doing things and not necessarily the creative work that you're doing there. The process is the thing that we're all looking at, the way of working best practice. So this is looking at grouping, adding EQs, EQs doing the mixing on it, showing evidence of good best practice there.